You're 100 meters up the side of a vertical cliff face. You're mentally and physically exhausted. Your last piece of protection is five meters below you. A fall now means a 10 meter free fall or more. You can see what you think may be a good handhold, only it's just out of your reach. Your forearms are so pumped, you do not think you can hang on any longer. Your palms are sweaty and starting to slip. Your legs are shaking so bad, your feet are about to pop off the footer. You can't go down. There's only one option, and that's total commitment. You reach for that hold, desperately willing your fingers and arms to stretch. You touch it. Your fingertips slowly gain some friction. You slowly transfer your weight and reach for a better grip. In that instant, you realize the hold is no good. It's a sloper and you're not going to be able to hold on. In that exact moment, that split second, you know you're about to take one of the biggest whippers you've taken in your life you're going to fall. You scream, falling, to your partner below you on the cliff at the same time as you pop off. You're weightless. The rock is a blur in front of your eyes. The fall is so big, you have time to think. Please God, let that anchor hold. Now doesn't that sound like a whole heap of fun? It's one of the most unique, adrenaline-filled, addictive feelings you can possibly imagine. Today, I'm going to talk to you about a life of rock climbing. Together, Steph and I have been traveling the world rock climbing for 12 years. In fact, it was rock climbing that brought us together all those years ago. I was on a rock climbing trip in Krabi, Thailand, when I was lucky enough to meet this little Frenchie in a restaurant. For the first eight years of our relationship, rock climbing became an obsession, a complete way of life. Everything we did revolved around climbing our travel destinations, our training, where we chose to live. Climbing together with your partner creates a special bond, a connection that goes far deeper than just being in a relationship or a friendship. Every single time you rope up, you literally put your life in your partner's hands. Trust is everything. Rock climbing pushes you to your absolute limit, both mentally and physically. And I truly believe that there is not many other sports or hobbies that can quite compare. Rock climbing, as the name suggests, is done in nature on natural formations. This means that climbing areas are generally found in some of the most remote and beautiful places on the planet. Most of the crags involve some form of hiking, sometimes even days of hiking to arrive at the climbing location itself. Climbing is a great passion to combine with long-term overland trips as climbing can be found in just about every country in the world. The gear required for a basic sport climbing kit is minimal and can easily fit in a medium-sized backpack. There are three main disciplines of climbing, bouldering, sport and traditional. Bouldering is climbing on smaller boulders with a high density foam mattress called a crash pad below you to protect if you fall. Sport climbing involves climbing on developed cliff faces where permanent anchors have been fixed into the wall at intervals up the route. Climbers start from the ground and use quick draws to clip one end to the wall and the other to your rope. You are only protected as far as your last anchor. The further you climb past the clipped anchor, the further you fall until you clip the next anchor. The aim in this style of climbing is to climb from the bottom to the top without falling or resting on an anchor. When this is achieved, you have sent the climb. Depending on the difficulty of the route, this can be an individual's project for weeks, months, or even years. Dedicated climbers will need to learn every single move that's required from the beginning to the finish, along with training to ensure that they are strong enough to achieve this. One wrong move or your arms running out of strength and you're off. Your partner lowers you to the bottom and you must start again. Sometimes you will fall only meters from the top of the climb. The emotional frustration can be extreme when working on longer term projects, but the pure adrenaline filled ecstasy of sending a tough climb after months of hard work is like nothing else in this world. Traditional climbing is where special trad gear such as camming devices, nuts, 
hexes and slings are placed in natural protection points along the climb. This gear could be used in cracks on the rock, holes, chalk stones or even trees growing out of the mountain. Typically traditional climbing is associated with multi-pitch longer routes and alpine climbing. Climbing is so dangerous, you guys are crazy. We get this a lot and I guess it's quite understandable for non-climbers to assume that rock climbing is a dangerous pastime. My answer to that is rock climbing is definitely not as dangerous as you would think. In fact, with proper training and experience, I would go so far as to say it's an extremely safe sport. Rock climbing, other than bouldering, is relatively low impact. The ropes are designed to take all of the shock loading out of a fall, as the ropes stretch up to 30%. The bigger the fall, the softer the catch. Of course, falling can be scary, but as your experience grows, so does your trust in your equipment and also your own ability. Rock climbing is a lifetime pursuit. We know many people that have been climbing since childhood and continue to climb well into their senior years. Sometimes climbing just as hard, if not harder than they were in their younger days. Due to the low impact nature of climbing, your chance of doing physical injury to yourself is actually quite low in comparison to high impact sports. Climbing is all about slow and controlled movements using your core strength, flexibility, and very much your mind to figure out the moves and sequence to get you safely from the ground to the top of the wall. Some of the most memorable experiences of our lives have been from climbing. Sometimes scary, but mostly just from that incredible sense of accomplishment you feel after reaching the top of a cliff face or mountain peak, screaming for joy and taking in the epic surroundings. Rock climbing has taken us to some of the most beautiful places on the planet, often to unique locations that are only accessible by climbers. That feeling of knowing you are one of the few people in the world who has stood in that exact location and taken in that view from that mountain peak is something truly special. After all these years of climbing, we get the same enjoyment from the sport as we always have. Admittedly, we don't climb as much as we'd like to these past few years, but we feel we have found a nice balance between full-time travel, work and climbing. We have climbed in almost all of the 50 plus countries we have traveled together over the last 12 years. And we know that we will continue to climb for as long as we are able. From stunning regions all over Australia, to Thailand and a very special multi-pitch climb on which I asked Steffi the big question and she said yes. Halong Bay in Vietnam and of course all over France in the countless climbing areas of this beautiful country, Spain, the home of the highest concentration of sport climbing anywhere in the world is by far one of our favourite destinations. Portugal, Austria, Czech Republic, Germany, Greece, Poland, Slovenia, Croatia, Albania, Italy and Bosnia. From the beautiful red rock of South Africa's Waterval Boven, to New York and the freezing conditions of November in the Shawangunk Mountains. From the high Atlas Mountains and Todra Gorge of Morocco to the out of this world scenery of Yangshu in China. China is to this day one of our most memorable climbing trips. All over the stunning country of Turkey on several separate trips. We have climbed in Kazakhstan, Kyrgyzstan, Tajikistan and even found a big rock to climb in a remote area of Mongolia. Over the three months we overlanded Korea, we climbed in many magnificent locations. Japan is a country covered in mountains with countless climbing areas to explore, all of them in stunning settings. Now in Taiwan, we spent time at the famous coastal cliffs of Long Dong. So where will we climb next? I can tell you, we will not climb again in Taiwan. In fact, our climbing equipment, along with something else very special to us, is no longer in Taiwan. You can learn all about that over at our Patreon account or wait a little longer until possibly next month when we will reveal all. I've wanted to make this video for some time now to share with you our passion for this amazing sport. I really hope it's given a little insight into why we climb and the joy that it brings. Chances are many of you are saying stuff that you can keep it. But maybe there's also a few of you thinking that you'd like to give climbing a go. We honestly can't recommend it highly enough. If you don't have a partner, head on down to your local indoor gym 
and sign up for a few lessons or try bouldering as a start. Remember, there are climbs for beginners. You won't be expected to be hanging upside down from your fingertips 20 metres from the ground until at least the second week. Just kidding. A life of rock climbing is a fun way to keep fit and healthy, spend time in nature, form unbreakable bonds with others and make friends for life. We are always more than happy and consider it a great privilege to take people climbing for the very first time. So if you do run into us on the road somewhere in the world, ask us to take you climbing. We'd be absolutely honoured to do so. Thank you so very much for watching this video. Please do help us out by liking, subscribing, hitting that notification bell so you don't miss any of the videos and we'll see you in the mountains.